I'm Sean, and this is a soft closed door latch. You'll find these on a Tesla Model X, as well as several different McLaren uh, models. Um, they are completely interchangeable, and they may be found in some other cars as well. Uh, but these sometimes have a problem. And uh, I picked up a set uh, from a Model X and put it on my McLaren. You can retrofit these, they plug right in, and they work great when they work. As it turns out, this part is identical, even though it has a different part number in all of these vehicles. And the same problem applies no matter what car it came out of. In this case, it came from a Tesla Model X on the passenger side, but the actual McLaren branded latches have the same problem. So what is that problem? Well, on occasion, this will not indicate correctly that the door is closed. Uh, it may pull it in and everything is fine, but then it still says that the door is open. Now, on a McLaren, that means that the window is gonna go down. Uh, anytime you go to open the door, brings the glass down and then opens the door so you don't break the glass. It is a frameless window, it goes up in the body, so if you don't wanna break it, it has to bring it down. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works out in a Model X, but I believe it may be a similar function. So what's happening is every once in a while it'll say it's open, even though it's not. Not a big deal, the door itself does stay latched, it's just the indication that it's open. And where the problem comes in is you might be driving down the road and your window will go down and it'll say your door's open, even though it's perfectly safe latched tight. So why does this happen? Well, we are going to find out. I'm gonna take this apart and see exactly what the issue is. And can we fix it? So here we have the unit itself. There are two parts to it, the electronics and the mechanics. So first we've gotta separate the two and see if we can tell what's going on. There are four screws that hold this together. So now we've got these two parts separated. Electronics, mechanics, and this little thing that joins between the two. On the mechanics side of things, you kind of see what's going on. Uh, in some cases you might have a second cable, and this one we do not. But, uh, these mechanics actually do work fine. Um, you can tell that if you take the latch itself here, you close it, and then we pull the cable, we see all of that moves fine. So, the mechanic side of this shouldn't even really be triggering that fault to begin with. Uh, it's just going to be the mechanics of it physically latching. So that leads me to believe that this issue is the electronics. Now as far as the electronics assembly goes, uh, this plastic piece is glued on top. Well, not really exactly glued, but there is a type of sealant adhesive. And I've tried to pry this apart uh, using a screwdriver and you just can't get all of it out, and we've got this on top here. So off camera, I'm going to end up cutting this piece off so we can get the whole thing apart, look at the board, and see if we can tell what's failing. So in a shocking turn of events, I did manage to get this piece off without damaging it. It's a little bit marred here and there, but it could be reused, and you could possibly do a little bit better job than I did, but I just used more leverage. I uh, used a bigger screwdriver. I went from this side, went under it, and just pulled up on it and went very, very slowly and let it release all the way down here and on this side, and this side you can't really get under there. I just kind of pulled it up, let it go little by little, it eventually did come off. Uh, so then we get to this point. We've got four screws that are kind of buried under here, 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 and here, and that's all we have to this. It is the same Torx that we used before, which is a... T10. So now we can take this piece apart and see what we're working with. So the connector comes in, we've got 
uh, an IC chip over here and a few other light components on this board and then it goes to another board down here but the way this whole mechanism works uh, this does not actually go anywhere it actually just keeps this gear in place but as you as the motor turns it turns another gear here which turns another gear here which turns another gear there and eventually it turns this which in turn goes to the mechanical spot so we've got all these gears going on so I'm gonna take this apart and see what this down here looks like uh, this does not look like it will be serviceable at all uh, it's surface mount parts and it's uh, on a very very small board and uh, nothing that I can tell from here looks like a crack solder joint or anything like that so I'm guessing it might be down here Okay, so the board slides right out. That's the plug where the motor uh, just plugs in. But here are all the electronics of this unit. And uh, we've got a few more IC chips. So that's where all the logic is happening. And where I'm kind of curious is, uh, is it a solder joint that we can't see in here? Do these IC chips just go bad? Uh, is there a certain condition where they decide to not work correctly, be it temperature or humidity or a combination of the two, or vibration would be my first guess, but I had no consistency on uh, when it was doing it, but it did seem to do it uh, a little more frequently when it was more humid, um, and it was more humid when raining, so it's possible that the cooler temperatures. Uh, I could leave it overnight, and the window would roll down and say that the door was open, uh, even while the uh, car was locked, um, so I suspect there may be a condition uh, where something here is affected by temperature. I did have it happen while driving a few times and it seemed to do it a little bit less and work a little bit better uh, when it was hotter, which is a little bit peculiar, but that's also an indication of a solder joint problem in a lot of cases. Uh, I don't see anything very apparent, but I'll take a much closer look and see if I can find anything. I took a closer look at this. And if there is a solder joint problem, it would require a magnifying glass, which I don't have here. Uh, but if I did, that also means that it's too small for me to fix. And probably the average DIY as well. So the only places that I can think there might be a problem, and I would need the pin out for this latch, is these four pins. I'm guessing that there's going to be one for power, one for ground, and then possibly another one for power and another one for ground that actually sends the information back to the car to say if the window uh, should be up or down as a result of being latched or not latched. But one of them is obviously going to be for power and you don't need a reverse polarity on this. So in that instance, uh, this was very sporadic, uh, but how everything was acting, the four pins are right in there. That's where those would solder in. And it's might be possible that you could re-solder those and that may solve the issue. Uh, there's no good way to test it unless you can plug it up in the car and then constantly repeatedly uh, check functionality, uh, which would require having your car apart. So if you're taking it apart to do this, you may be able to kind of re-solder those, plug it back in and just take it through the paces. If it's once every 50, obviously it's going to take a lot of testing time. If it's once every three, you could probably replicate that. But that's the only way that I can see this might be even remotely serviceable is if it's one of the solder joints on the back side of these pins being the cause. Now, another thing that I observed is on the board it says LH, which I would indicate to be left hand, especially because here it says RH for right hand. So I don't know if the boards are actually different or if they're the same, or in a McLaren, this would be the left hand but in the Tesla, it's the right hand. So maybe this is the same for uh, 
left hand for every other car. Uh, and then the Tesla happens to be the right hand, so they just change the sticker to where it says right hand on that one. That I don't know. But the end result really is this is more than likely not a user serviceable item. Um, the off chance that it might be one of those pins, uh, but I, I'm not exactly sure. I suspect it might be one of these IC chips is actually the problem. So that being said, uh, it's better to just replace these. They're relatively inexpensive, so unless you just want to go through all this work and try it out just to see if it'll do it, honestly, I don't think it's worth the time uh, just for how long it takes and the kind of the pain you'll have to reseal it and everything else. I think you're better off just buying a new one and replacing it. Um, I have seen these as low as $75, and my time is worth more than that. So that's what I would do. Uh, unfortunate, but I can also verify that it's not mechanical related because on mine, the only thing I changed out with was the electronics. I left the mechanical bits in there and it's worked perfectly fine ever since. So that does confirm it is definitely electronics. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we have a new upload, and thanks for watching.